Hi viewers, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see an overview of migrating your machines to Google Cloud Platform using Migrate for Compute Engine. Migrate for Compute Engine is formally called as Velastrata. On further, we are going to discuss the step-by-step -step approach on how to migrate AWS EC2 VMs to Google Cloud. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. What is Migrate for Compute Engine? Migrate for Compute Engine is also called as Velastrata. And with this product, you can migrate your local compute machines to Google Cloud Platform without changing or modifying your underlying local machine or compute. With Migrate for Compute Engine, you can migrate your physical servers, VMware VMs, AWS EC2 VMs, and Azure VMs as well. This is the architecture diagram of Migrate for Compute Engine. Let me brief you about this architecture. To your left top, you can see the on-premises workloads. To your left bottom, you can see the AWS and Azure workloads. These are going to be our source of migration, meaning our source can be on-premises environment, AWS cloud and Azure cloud. To your right, you can see the destination and that's going to be our Google cloud. Your source and destination is connected using a VPN. Once you set up your source and destination for migration, you will be installing the migration manager from the marketplace. Migration manager provides you a web UI to facilitate, manage and monitor the migration activities. These cloud extensions contains the actual worker nodes that does the actual migration and creates the migrated VMs in Google Cloud Platform. Cloud extensions should be created before starting the actual migration of VMs. Once you start the migration in the Migration Manager, it will create a source caching VM in the concerned source location. This source caching VM is called as backend in terms of on-premises VMware environment and it is called as importer in terms of AWS and Azure. This backends and importer caches the source machine data and streams it to the Google Cloud. The worker nodes or the edge nodes in the Google Cloud utilizes these streamed data from the backend or the importer and creates the migrated VMs in Google Cloud. Once the migration completes, from source to destination, the backend or the importer will be automatically terminated. This is the same architecture diagram which we have seen in the last slide, but now it's with respect to AWS and GCP migration alone. Now let us see the step-by-step -step migration approach that we need to do in order to migrate VMs from AWS to GCP. Step number one, set up Google Cloud Platform for migration. Under this step, first, you need to create an organizational account, the valid billing, create projects underneath your GCP account and assign corresponding roles and permissions to your administrator who is going to execute this migration. Second, you need to set up your networking in GCP by creating VPC, VPNs, firewall rules, and so on. Lastly, you need to create the service account and relevant roles for your migrate for compute engine. You can refer to the link given in the video description for each and every step that we are discussing in the step-by-step -step migration approach. Step number two, set up AWS for migration. In the same way how you did it in GCP, you need to prepare your AWS environment, which is going to be our source for migration. First, you need to set up your AWS account with a valid billing. 
configure your AWS networking. Create IAM groups, users and roles that will be used by Migrate for Compute Engine. Step number three, you need to create a VPN between AWS and GCP. You can ignore this step if you would have done this before in step one and two. This is the architecture diagram for VPN and if you don't know how to create a VPN between these two clouds, please refer the channel previous videos. Step number four, set up migrate for compute engine. Before executing step number four, you should have completed step number one, two and three. That's going to be our prerequisite. Next, you need to install and configure Migrate for Compute Engine from Google Cloud's Marketplace. Once you install the Migration Manager, log in to the web console of it and create the cloud extension, which will create a pair of worker nodes to do the actual migration task. Step number five. Migrate AWS EC2 VMs to Google Cloud Platform. If you are going to migrate the Linux VMs, reconfigure your base OS to be compatible with Google Cloud. This is achieved by executing some scripts in your source VMs. Those scripts are available with Google Cloud documentations. Please refer video description for the same. When you are migrating huge number of VMs, you cannot do it in a single stretch. As a best practice, you need to prepare a sprint plan, subdivide the plan into migration waves. This migration wave is created in the web UI of the migration manager. Within the single migration, you need to prepare a runbook and jobs for your migration. Once you execute the job, your actual migration starts. There are different migration operations you can do within a job. Let us discuss the different migration operations in the next slide. And people will call it as VM migration lifecycle. These are the migration operations available with Migrate for Compute Engine. We will discuss one by one. When you choose the migration operation as full migration in a job, at the end of this job, your source VM is fully removed from the source and it is fully migrated to Google Cloud Platform, assuming the source VM will work OK in GCP. Run in Cloud moves the source VMs to Google Cloud. This does not completely move the entire VM to GCP. What it does is, it shutdowns the source VMs, starts a new VM in the Google Cloud, but the storage for this VM will be streamed from your source VM. Migrate for Compute Engine will act as a storage cache layer here. This operation is just to check if the source VM is functioning properly in Google Cloud. The next operation is prepare to detach. If you are run in cloud, operation works fine, do a prepare to detach operation that creates the native disks in Google Cloud with the help of the cache layer from Migrate for Compute Engine. Next is to perform a detach operation which attaches the native disks to the Compute Engine VMs and it will start the VMs in Google Cloud. After the VMs are detached and if your testings are over, you can start the detach cleanup. Now each VM is then marked as unmanaged by the Migrate for Compute Engine so that you can freely use the migrated VMs in Google Cloud. If the validation fails, you can do a move back of your VMs to the source. Storage migration copies only the source VM storage data into a disks on the compute engine. Upgrade OS operation will upgrade your OS during the migration. In the test clone operation, migrate for compute engine, 
clones the VM from the source platform and then moves the cloned VMs as compute engine VMs for testing. In this scenario, the source VM is not removed or deleted. Any changes made to the data in the test clone are not replicated back to your live source systems. Deleting the test clone removes it from the Google Cloud. With an offline migration operation, Migrate for Compute Engine enables you to migrate workloads that's running with the operating systems that are not supported by Migrate for Compute Engine's streaming technology. I hope we have covered all the migration operations. This is the summary of this video that we have discussed for the past few minutes in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.